All right, next item on the agenda is item number uh, three, the recommendations to address uh, human trafficking. I'll just make a couple uh, opening remarks and then hand it over to the vice mayor who was uh, gracious enough to be the chair of the human trafficking uh, task force for the uh, city of Phoenix. Uh, obviously, we are blessed as a community and as a city to be the host of the Super Bowl uh, this upcoming winter uh, for the February uh, game. It's gonna, we're gonna be the very best host that the Super Bowl has ever seen. With that uh, opportunity comes uh, also great responsibility. And we're all aware that of the reports that of these major events, including major sporting events, unfortunately in communities there's often a, uh, an, an uptick in human trafficking uh, activities. And we wanna make sure that we are the safest Super Bowl possible and the lessons learned from that as we adopt policies and procedures to ensure that we're the safest Super Bowl possible on the issue of human trafficking. Those are the exact lessons and policies that are gonna keep us safe uh, thereafter. So with that in mind, I did ask Vice Mayor Waring, who is such a leader on these important issues while he served in the uh, legislature before he upgraded to the city council. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I asked the Vice Mayor to chair our human, uh, the city human trafficking task force because so much of the enforcement issues are gonna be done at the city level during the Super Bowl uh, and beyond. And also I asked uh, my friend and, and, and someone who I've worked with for many years and has just been a leader on so many issues and was the obviously the right person to be the co-chair, Sarah Suggs, now over Connor House, but has served on village planning committees and every time the city has asked her to step up to the plate, uh, she has and I wanna thank both of them for stepping up to the plate uh, in this regard. So without further ado, um, he and his team, in my opinion, have done outstanding work uh, in this effort and I know we've got a kind of a, a wave of people coming up because there were various task forces from the human trafficking uh, uh, task force, a wave of subcommittees that are gonna come forward and talk about the particular work and their recommendations to this council. Without further ado, uh, Vice Mayor Jim Waring. Thanks very much, Mayor, I appreciate it. Uh, before we get to that, I, I will say about the last group, as a father of four-year-old twins who had swimming lessons just this morning, uh, you know, the folks you saw before this, they effectively ruined my pool for me. I think about this constantly, and I mean this in a good way, checking the locks on the pool gate and so forth, always checking the pool, making sure I know where the kids are. So I think that's an excellent thing, and so we appreciate their work very much. Uh, Mayor, I appreciate very much you bringing this uh, item to the fore and, and to making this happen. I personally appreciate you putting me on this uh, subcommittee to make this uh, presentation happen here today. I think we're very excited about what we have to present. Uh, I learned a lot during this process. Uh, probably it would shock the viewers at home to know that the second biggest organized crime activity in the world is human trafficking. Now I think a lot of people would have guessed drug traffic being number one, and it is, but I, I wouldn't necessarily have guessed. I would have thought gambling or, or something else would be second, but this is second. Millions of people are trafficked all around the world and it is completely unacceptable. And I think that the mission of this task force is to make it unacceptable, period. There's been a lot of focus on the Super Bowl. I don't necessarily think that's fair to either the NFL or uh, the participants in the game. It's not their fault that this activity tends to travel, as I learned during the subcommittee, with good transportation, good weather, but big events, not just football games, but big events, golf tournaments and conferences, World et cetera, uh, World Cup. Uh, you know, there's, just, there's, there's a whole host of things that we host here in Phoenix because we have such a wonderful community and people want to come here uh, for those type of activities and it's a frustration for me that that also has negative consequences and that this is one of them. Uh, you alluded to my tenure in the Senate, I tend to be pretty hard nosed and sort of the law and order guy on this kind of stuff and I don't think it should be tolerated at all or under no illusions I think as a committee that this is going to end completely. But we are gonna try to make it extremely unpleasant for anyone who wants to engage in this kind of activity here in our neighborhoods. It's just completely unacceptable. We're gonna do everything we can to reach out, but before, both before and after the game, to other cities hosting big events in the future as we reached out to past hosts of Super Bowls and other big events as well to try to make sure we were implementing best practices. But we'll try to make sure that Valley uh, cities and cities around the state of Arizona have access to our resources to the extent that we can. We will try to mentor them and make sure that they also understand what can be done to prevent this type of activity. Was very pleased to learn, uh, we have a representative from our uh, Phoenix Police Department here today, very pleased to learn that we are dedicating a lot more resources already from our police department to trying to combat this activity. And when I say this activity, you gotta remember the average age of someone starting in this life, uh, the young, mostly young women, starting in this life is 12 years old and the average age I think we were told is 14. Uh, so you're really talking about kids 
I know they may be committing crimes, but we're not looking at them as the criminals. Frankly, a big component of this is to make sure that they get the help they need. So victim services is a key component of this, as well as educating the public. To that end, I want to make a special shout out. You'll be introduced to the members of the committee here in just a minute. We had folks from law enforcement, the Attorney General's office. We had our own Kenan's Police Department. As I mentioned, we had the Maricopa County Attorney's Office participated. Lots of folks who work specifically with this population of people that's being um, trafficked. And we want to make sure that they're recognized. Certainly appreciate my co-chair, uh, Sarah Suggs from the O'Connor House, participating as always stepping up. And that was terrific. But I also want to recognize uh, uh, two who aren't necessarily involved in this as a day-to-day -day activity. And that's Debbie Johnson from the Arizona Lodging and Resort Association. Really appreciate her efforts on this because, again, through no fault of their own, some of this activity will occur and our fine resorts and everything, and they want to curtail it too. And we really appreciate the fact that, that you got involved with this, as well as our own Tammy Fisher uh, from our airport. Again, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that their staffers and the owners of hotels and so forth know what to look for and so that they can get victims the help that they need and we can identify the people purchasing services doesn't do it justice, engaging in these crimes, much of which occurs online. I was shocked to learn that as well, that this is an organized activity in that you can order people up like room service, apparently online. It's just appalling when you really think about it. So again, back to the mayor, thank you for, for focusing on something that doesn't get a lot of attention. We are gonna try to change that. The members of the subcommittee um, and the subcommittee components of our subcommittee are here to speak, uh, so you'll hear from them in just a minute, uh, but I wanted to turn it over uh, to Deanna Janovich from the city staff, and Deanna and Ashley Bunch from my office did a tremendous job in pulling this all together and doing, uh, doing the heavy lifting to make sure that this gets done, and we, have a, we wanted to make sure that we had a realistic plan that is implementable throughout the fall leading up to the Super Bowl, but we wanted to make sure, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> that it's not just about the Super Bowl or any one event, that we have best practices that are implemented uh, throughout all time in Arizona, and that if people want to and insist on engaging in this horrendous activity, that they do it somewhere else. And so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Deanna, who will introduce the rest of our panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. It's a pleasure to be here today to introduce to you the Phoenix Compass Plan for your review and approval. I have with me today at the table just a few of the members that participated throughout the process. To my right is Kim Sterling with the O'Connor House, Lieutenant Robert Conrad from the Phoenix Police Department, Katie Resendez with Trust Arizona, Kathleen Wynn with the Attorney General's Office, and Sarah Suggs, for the CEO of O'Connor House and co-chair of the task force. As you can see, and as uh, Vice Mayor indicated, the task force was made up of a very broad, diverse group of individuals that are really committed to establishing the city as a model in addressing and combating human trafficking. This is the mission that they developed throughout the process. And so in order to achieve that mission, they developed a very strong Phoenix Compass plan. The uniqueness of the plan is that it's very comprehensive. It's collaborative and they wanted to ensure that it's community wide and many members and community partners are participating as well as looking at some innovative ways that we can address human trafficking. There's many efforts already occurring in the community but we wanted to see how we could look much more innovative in addressing this issue. And last but certainly not least, as again the Vice Mayor indicated, is really changing the culture and making the statement that human trafficking will not be acceptable within the city of Phoenix. And as you can see, we do have a compass as our branding, and this was our effort in really looking at how we could steer our community again in preventing and combating human trafficking. There were four specific areas that the group wants to really focus on over the next year. The first one is awareness and outreach. We also have law enforcement, victim services, and training. Each of the members at the table today are gonna provide you just a quick overview of just some of the highlights in each of those areas. You all have the much more comprehensive plan that we have before you today for approval. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kim. Thank you. The goal of the awareness and outreach community is twofold. One is to raise awareness in the community and provide education about this horrific uh, event going on all of the time in our community, unfortunately, and to provide areas of actionable involvement for the community. So in that light, we will begin the Stop Human Trafficking campaign. It will 
actually we have begun it we have a fabulous project that the o'connor house is running the safe action project in concert with the hospitality committee who have stepped up to the plate and just an unbelievable effort to engage all of the hospitality industry in awareness and education prior to the super bowl however that will continue as well after the super bowl and this campaign will also continue to end trafficking in phoenix the second uh, event of the awareness and outreach work will be to create and utilize awareness materials we already have a tremendous collaboration involved that includes the homeland security department they have a national campaign blue campaign so you will see more of us wearing blue as we begin this and we encourage you to do the same so uh, <laughs> Councilwomen uh, Pastor and Williams, you are right on point here. Um, and as well as international, uh, Trust International and the um, uh, Shared Hope International campaigns, they have all been very collaborative uh, working with us and allowing us to use any of their materials as well as being able to put the logo of the city of Phoenix on all of their materials as well. So it's tremendous. We will be creating a communication plan with the timeline activities during the whole lead up of this campaign and following so that the media is involved. There is a huge, will be a huge effort in training the media as well because there are, are certain misconceptions that everyone has about what happens in, in this industry, who are involved, the, the uh, kinds of girls and young boys that are involved in this, and most of it is not true. So we have a huge education to do with the media. And the last uh, bullet point for this campaign will be to strengthen our community partnerships. Um, you notice it doesn't say established community partnerships. We already have tremendous partnerships underway, but we will continue to strengthen them. And those include the faith-based community, the hospitality committee, uh, community media, and all of the not-for-profit and victim services agencies that are involved in this effort as well. So thank you, and Lieutenant Conrad will speak on the law enforcement participation. Thank you very much. Lieutenant, please. Thank you. Um, so the first part is our uh, focus is law enforcement and strengthening law enforcement services through the community collaborations. Um, the city of Phoenix, our police department, we're very unique in that we um, are the only law enforcement agency in the state that has a full-time vice enforcement unit working on human trafficking. Um, our vice unit is very innovative. We work with uh, prosecutors to come up with new and inventive methods to combat human trafficking. What we want to do um, is share all that experience and expertise that we've already uh, uh, gotten through work in this effort. And we want to work with other Valley law enforcement agencies to bring them up to speed so that they can work in their own communities and do their own uh, enforcement in this area which in turn will give us a broader effect um, and hopefully um, uh, work towards uh, um, a better approach to combating the crime, human trafficking. That operation we termed as Operation Blue Wave. We've already done one operation and it was very, very successful. Um, we trained six Valley agencies. Um, the next, um, collaborate with law enforcement to implement House Bill 2454. Uh, we want to ensure all of our law enforcement partners are, as we are, up to speed on the new law um, when it goes into effect because it's still very important. Um, so we're working with uh, county prosecutors to get up to speed on the law so when we do implement it, we can make full effect of it. Um, really, it's our intent to send a strong message that trafficking a child of any age brings star uh, harsh penalties. Um, the police department will soon begin um, large-scale human trafficking enforcement efforts in concert with 10 other Valley law enforcement agencies, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation that we're partnering with. Um, we're going to conduct enforcement efforts moving towards the Super Bowl, and 
we're going to target both the demand side as well as uh, temps. With the results of the operations being publicized um, to send a clear message that human trafficking is not tolerated here. Um, and finally, uh, we're going to strengthen our partnership with our own missing persons um, detail to better identify and respond to juveniles who are repeat runaways, who are often targets of sex predators and human traffickers. Um, additionally, working in with uh, our um, missing partners part missing persons partners, we can uh, give us another avenue to target pimps and work in that direction. Um, it's our goal to engage these kids before they become victims of child sex trafficking. That's it. Katie, thank you very much, Lieutenant. Louise. Thank you. The task force also considered how we as a city respond to victims of trafficking. And delivering access to high quality care became a major priority. So among the victim service subcommittee, the goal is creating increased access to service through community and collaboration. You'll hear those two words throughout the entire presentation. Uh, one of the collaborators that we'll be working with is the National Human Trafficking Resource Center. Their national hotline on trafficking, 888-3737-888, provides a single centralized resource for all situations of trafficking. By increasing utilization of this hotline, we're able to provide access, actually rapid access, to victims of trafficking and give them a broader range of services. Um, because each call to the hotline is recorded and analyzed, using this hotline will also give us a very clear picture of what trafficking looks like here in our city. So it'll serve as a very strong resource for us. The development of a service provider database will give law enforcement, service providers, and general community members a broader understanding of what services are available and how to access those services. That database will also increase communication among service providers and thereby allow for greater collaboration among the entities. Um, there's a very strong network of service provision here in the Valley, uh, mostly focused here in Phoenix, but in the Valley and in the state as well. But when we look really closely at that continuum of care, we notice that there are gaps in services. In order to address those gaps, we really want to utilize existing resources in new and creative ways, and also support and build new partnerships so that agencies who may be working on another issue are brought into the fold on this issue and able to provide resources here as well. Um, by strengthening partnerships, we can really begin to address all of the gaps in service provision and be able to address all of the needs of service of victims of trafficking. When we look at victims of trafficking, one of the first things we noticed was that they share diverse profiles. They may be young, they may be old, they may be male, female, US citizen, not. There's a broad range. And they also have an equally diverse service needs. So it's very important that we as a city are able to address that entire range of needs. While our attention may be drawn to media coverage of a young girl trafficked into commercial sex, we also have to make sure that we are prepared to respond to the men, women, and boys who are victimized by this crime. To this end, we'll develop a broad continuum of care to be able to address all victims of trafficking so that we as a city can really stand together and say, here in Phoenix, we not only know about trafficking, work to prevent it, respond to it, but also care for the victims in a true and deep way and make sure that anyone victimized by this heinous crime has time and space to heal. Thank you. And Kathleen from the AG's office. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council. The, in anticipation that this bill was going to be passed, uh, the Arizona Attorney General's Office, AZ Post, the City of Phoenix, uh, the Governor's Office, and uh, many statewide police agencies, and specifically the City of Phoenix Police Department, um, proactively planned and strategized for three training sessions that are going to take place between now and the end of November. These sessions are specifically designed to um, look at the new law, look at how it impacts um, the different populations, the Johns, the traffickers, and the victims, and how law enforcement needs to now, with this new law, apply it and get the best results for protecting our citizens. Also, in, into that vein, when you, when you take something that's been occurring a particular way and you change it, um, normally we don't we don't go out and we don't uh, take this kind of effort. And usually a memo just went out. So this is um, something that we're doing with all agencies around the state because the Super Bowl and other sporting events happen statewide. 
in conjunction with law enforcement, and I just have to say that um, the Phoenix Police Department, Sergeant Chris Bray and Clay Sutherland, have made themselves be 100 people um, because of the experience that the Phoenix Police Department is unique to Phoenix. Um, all the other cities don't have the resources and don't have what you have, and so your, your input is really what is key to making this successful in Arizona. We've also gone out to community. Where this conversation has resonated the most is inside churches. We've been in front of 5,000 church members statewide, um, and they really have been carrying the ball and really supporting the changes for this. We've also been in schools, and we know that in one of your Phoenix Charter Schools last year, we were called in because one of a 14-year-old, an eighth grader, was being trafficked, and she was recruiting her classmates. So we know it's happening here. We know it's happening in your city. We also know that um, with the new law change, that the new population that gets targeted is 18 because they are now legal. So if I'm a trafficker, I can start trafficking 18-year-olds, and so we have now started to talk to high school seniors at the end of their school year before they go off to college and they're isolated from their families. The other group of things that we've been doing as a collaboration is bringing together um, films and documentaries and those things that point this out. Um, Vice Mayor Mary, uh, Waring, um, along with um, the trust and everyone else who's part of this, um, show, had a film showing of Tricked. It was a th uh, three and a half year project that showed all the different dynamics, police, trafficking victims, Johns, and, and showed how the effects of trafficking on the different populations. That not only did it, was that good for you all because it created awareness inside Phoenix to show that you are behind this issue. We've, authors have been brought in, the Johns, Sex for Sale, and the men who buy it. We know 99% of our buyers are men. And we've brought in speakers, trafficking victims who have national recognition, have been featured in documentaries, so that we can continue to increase awareness with the public. The best way to stop something is to make people aware of what, that it's happening here in our community. Um, we are expanding our collaborations and trainings when, when they are necessary, and we, and we have um, taken from previous cities that have had Super Bowls, and we are compiling everything that we're learning so that we can pass it on to the next. Just by way of information, the Pro Bowl is the week before the Super Bowl, and on Super Bowl Sunday, we will also be having the Phoenix Open, the Bear Jackson Car Auction, and there's not a hotel room to be had. There'll be 58,000 hotel rooms all booked. And our collaborations between the cities is key to the success of this working. So we will ongoingly look for training opportunities to train our court staff, to train our law enforcement, and to train our public so that we can all work together to stop this terrible crime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarah. Good to see you. Uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of O'Connor House and Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, I want to thank Mayor Stanton, Vice Mayor Waring, and the entire council for your leadership in recognizing this egregious problem, particularly against minor children, and establishing this task force. This task force would not be possible without these collaborators that have been uh, mentioned throughout this presentation. Uh, we assembled with, uh, under uh, Ma Vice Mayor Waring's leadership and the mayor's, uh, a coalition of brilliant, s uh, seasoned, professional individuals and leaders in our community. And, and I would like to also thank our city staff because they have been heroic in being the conduit between the public and private sectors. Um, I also, uh, I could list them all specifically if you'd like, Vice Mayor Waring, or we can look to the PowerPoint, but we have uh, let me just go ahead and say we have Jane Baker with the Lutheran Ascension Church, Nancy Baldwin from the Hickey Family Foundation, Aaron uh, Alonso, city prosecutor from the city, Susan Ehrlich, uh, Judge Ehrlich, uh, John Eliason from the uh, Maricopa County Attorney's Office, Tammy Fisher, associate, uh, Aviation uh, Associate Director, Jim Gallagher, Lieutenant Gallagher from the City of Phoenix, Debbie Johnson from the Lodging and Tourism Association, Janet Olson, uh, from Natalie's House, Katie Resendez from Trust, Dominique, Dr. Dominique Rosefowitz from ASU, Cynthia Schuler from Tumbleweed, Brian Steele from the Phoenix Dream Center, Jackie Thompson uh, from the Arizona Foundation for, Wen for Women, and Kathleen Wynn uh, from the Attorney General's Office. Next slide, please. Our work group members, in addition to the task force themselves, the work group members were absolutely vital to the success of this task force. From the outset, 
the uh, task force was framed methodically and systematically in four sectors, the four sectors you've heard from those committee chairs. But we have had, as you can see, a wide variety of work group members who together work uh, to create a seamless structure. <coughs> I could not conclude without thanking Governor Brewer, Cindy McCain, Gil Arantxa, uh, Grant Woods, and Bill Montgomery, who also played key roles in supporting uh, this uh, effort for to combat human trafficking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for your uh, for your leadership. Uh, Vice Mayor had one uh, one comment he wanted to make. Then I'll, there's a couple members of the public that wish to testify. Then I'll hand over to members of the council for uh, questions or comments. Vice well, Mayor. I'm, I'm glad Sarah mentioned the efforts of, of Governor Brewer, Cindy McCain, Bill Montgomery, uh, former Attorney General Grant Woods. Uh, all participated. I know several went down and testified at the legislature, but they worked very hard to get the bill passed down at the legislature that will empower our police to do even more to try to prevent this than they're already doing. Also, you mentioned, I was glad somebody mentioned, I can't remember who it was, uh, the movie Tricked. We had a screening over at the Camel View Theaters, uh, Harkins Camel View, so thank you to them for hosting. Uh, Senator Dale O'Connor, Chief Justice, or former Justice O'Connor, excuse me, uh, attended, and it was really uh, fascinating. If you've got a strong stomach and you wanna watch it, but it will take a strong stomach. It was really horrifying to watch that documentary, hear the things that the male perpetrators said, the pimps said, it was amazing that they would agree to be on camera, uh, but the mindset was, was really um, fascinating in a very sick way to, to listen to what they had to say, but it was a very powerful documentary, so I'd recommend it. I know they've been doing screenings around the valley. Uh, and last, uh, you touched on it as well, Sarah, so thank you for that. The long list of people who weren't on the committee who signed up, we were playing to a relatively empty house when we first got together, but as I noted the last couple meetings, I talked to a couple of you about it, we had sort of almost standing room only audiences of people who work in this issue, who found out about this, who had never really come together before. It was fascinating how many people were meeting each other for the first time, and I think that um, really helps people coordinate effort and focus attention on this issue, and I think going forward, uh, that will really help our efforts. So I really applaud all the people who weren't on the committee but attended, helped with the subcommittees, et cetera. It meant a lot to us, and we really thank you very much. Mayor, uh, without further ado, I know we got a long agenda, so I will turn it back to you. Well, we have a couple cards on this um, uh, item, and I know it's an action item, so I'll, I'll turn you into a few more for a motion. But Leonard Clark, just provide testimony on this item up to two minutes, please, and then uh, Greta Rogers thereafter. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Yes, my name is Leonard Clark, and I strongly thank you, Councilman Waring, Pastor, Greg, Ms. Mayor Stanton, all of you for what you're doing. This is very important. Um, I was just looking at an article from 2011 in the Arizona Republic by J.J. Hensley, also stating that um, we have to be careful. Human trafficking is not the same as human smuggling, but <clears throat> I believe that we have to look very deep at what is causing these problems. We see a lot of our young people on the streets. Uh, obviously, the demons of drugs, that people become addicted, they become desperate. But I also want to talk to you about a more apropos thing that is taking place in our city of Phoenix and in Tucson. And of course, we've become the subject of headlines in the New York Times and the LA Times about how, and you know me, I'm a progressive. I have a lot of conservative friends say, sit down and shut up, we don't want to hear you lefty liberals. But I'm going to be honest right here and tell you right now, I'm greatly dismayed with the fact that we have ICE taking busloads of women and children and dumping them off in our bus station at Greyhound and there. Now, you say, well, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China, Mr. Clark? I'll tell you why. Desperate people who have no money to feed their children, the mothers, are going to be susceptible to these thugs, these pimps, who uh, do this. And, and I think right now we need to stop it. Because when you have tens of thousands of immigrants who are being dumped off in Phoenix because they land in Texas, that whole process of ICE taking immigrants, undocumented immigrants, taking them from the place they came over and putting them hundreds of miles away, that just makes them more susceptible. But so if we're really serious, if it's not just about the Super Bowl, then we should also contact our federal government, the mayor, the council, and say, look, you got to stop this. You can't be putting uh, children and their mothers dumping them off into Phoenix or Tucson or other states far from where they came over. And I know some of my, my more hardcore friends would say, well, Leonard, that's their fault. Well, it affects all of our society when desperate people are put in our midst. So thank you very much. I strongly approve of what you're doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Ms. Rogers? Ms. 
Mr. Rogers. Mayor and council um, members in attendance today, my name is Greta Rogers. Uh, I concur with what Mr. Clark said. No exception. Um, I had a call about prostitution <clears throat> rehabilitation being done in this city about a week ago. I didn't know anything about it. But I had a private meeting a week ago this Thursday with Aaron Carrion Anza. And he explained to me about the program. It's a good program. I'm glad we're doing it. And I don't think it needs headlines. But we've got to support it. We've got to stand with it and support it. 365 every year. It's had success by reducing recidivism of those gals who participate in prostitution thanks to the efforts of men who think with that which is between their legs to satisfy their sexual cravings. Prostitution is not unacceptable. It is despicable and reprehensible. It's a class one felony. It, child prostitution is the practice of slavery. None of these is acceptable. All are unlawful and must be prosecuted to the full extent that the law permits especially the pimps and the johns who are the procurers. This needs to be ongoing and dedicated to severely reduce this lifelong practice since man developed from an ape. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rogers. Appreciate you. And you that. must fund it not just because we have a visible event coming, because this is a stain, a living stain on the city of Phoenix. Correct it. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rogers. Yeah, I appreciate a, your testimony. I have a question for Mr. Rogers. Or Councilman Nowakowski, uh, you had a question? Basically, um, Mrs. Rogers, I want to thank you for, for bringing that up, the um, prevention program. I was honored to actually go to two graduations and to hear these young ladies at the graduation how their lives were changed. I mean, it's just amazing. Their stories of when they first entered the program till they exit the program. And one of the, one of the symbols that they give the young ladies are actually a starfish. And they tell the story about the starfish mm -hmm. and that they are the starfish that was saved. And it's just amazing. And I encourage each of my colleagues, if you have a chance to participate in one of those graduations, it's, it's life changing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilman Nowakowski. Councilman, very much uh, for, that, uh, for those comments. I had a quick question. Uh, we know in this, uh, with human trafficking, uh, the victims um, often can't communicate. Uh, their cell phone or their computer or any electronic access is fully monitored by their uh, victimizer. So even if a victim wants to get help and is in a position to seek help, you know, fear for their life because if they reach out, uh, in, in the traditional ways that we all take for granted, they could be putting their own lives at risk. What are we doing to make sure that we're at the cutting edge of, of, of uh, ensuring that communication can occur in a way that is safe for uh, victims that when they're here and they learn about these opportunities can fully take advantage of the, the, the great faith community and nonprofits that are here to provide help? Uh, first I'll say thank you. I'm very impressed by how much you know about the issue and how it, well you're able to speak off the cuff about it. I've spoken in front of lots of city councils and legislatures who, when we talk about trafficking, they kind of do the, huh, thing. So I'm really impressed that you have an idea around the victimology. You're absolutely right, though. There are very many situations where trafficking victims either can't reach out to get services themselves, to say, call that hotline, or where they don't necessarily recognize that they're trafficked. One of the really amazing things about this plan is that in its four pieces, when we look at awareness and outreach and training, we're actually able to train the community to recognize those situations. Just like we don't necessarily expect a five-year-old to call the police and say, help, I'm a victim of child abuse, we have to apply some of those same rules of victimology for victims of trafficking. So it becomes up to us as community members to be able to identify those situations and to identify risk factors. Uh, and really this comprehensive plan does provide for that with both some of the media and the training pieces so that we as community members are prepared to do those identifications. Thank you very much. 
Mayor Stanton. Ms. Wynn, please. I just wanted to say that some of the cases that we have are runaway cases. So we're training law enforcement to recognize that maybe something that appears to be a chronic runaway is actually a sex trafficking case so that when this girl comes into our purview again that we, we, we try different strategies and tactics. And, and that's part of the ongoing training so that we can start to look at the victims differently than, than prostitutes than part of the crime as perpetrators. So, so part of this is just recognizing that someone is even being trafficked and, and getting them when we have them in our, in our purview. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I make a motion, uh, I would like to recognize in rows two, three, and four, we have quite a few of our task force members who did not speak, our volunteers and staff who helped. If you would all please stand and be recognized. All right, without, that, uh, without further ado, Mayor, I'd like to move the staff recommendation be adopted. I'll second that, Mayor. The motion to adopt uh, staff recommendation and the recommendations of this uh, great task force. We have a second. Comments or questions by members of the council? Councilman DeCicio, please. Just a quick one, and I know it's running late today. Uh, one of the issues that c comes up is, you know, dealing with the arrests of these victims, because they are victims. And in, in some cases, you would think that that's not a good idea, but it really does because it detains them, it keeps them away from the Johns. What happens when they're released? I mean, how do we, and what kind of plan is in place or what are we thinking about when it comes to the release? I mean, and how do we get them so far away from the Johns or in a safe place? How, what's the next step? I'll take that Please. one. Um, because situations of trafficking are so diverse and so different, and any individual could be victimized by trafficking, really looking at long-term care is dependent on that individual. One of the things that we really talked about as a group was that the crime of trafficking is really about taking consent from someone. So one of the most important things that we can do is start to restore consent as soon as possible. So that means the moment of release, you know, try, trying to say things like, do you want a black pair of flip-flops or a white pair of flip-flops? As ridiculous as that sounds to us, providing those kinds of choices starts to recreate pathways in the brain that trauma has killed, essentially. Um, so what we wanna do is create really a broad spectrum of care so that the client themselves really is recognized as a victim and given options for care. Um, when they are within the judicial system, it works a little differently. We do see victims of trafficking who are charged with various crimes for various reasons, and that would depend on their legal counsel and what legal services are available. But across the board, we really want to be able to provide as many choices and not create mandatory services for these victims. Uh, oh, oh, Councilman, oh, please go ahead. Oh, just as a follow-up then. So if, you know, because I'm always interested in what happens when they're released back on the street again. I mean, where does that individual go, you know, primarily the child? You know, how does that, you know, what is the next step, that continuum of care for that? So if you were to take someone in, and I get the consent part because it's already been taken away and, I, right. you know, they're in a bad situation, but what happens when we've detained them for that 24-hour or 48-hour period of time and it's, you can't reconnect the brain that fast? Right. You know, how do you move them out? <laughs> and get them to say, yeah, I'm willing to go and take their cell phone away from them so that they can't communicate with their John. Okay, thanks. Um, that's a really good question. When we look at child victims, it's a different situation. We have a responsibility to care for them. And we have a number of service organizations here in the Valley that work specifically with child victims of trafficking. Uh, when we look at adult victims of trafficking, it's really about creating that bridge to care. And we focused a lot on that first 48 hours. So what we wanna look at is safe housing, a safe contact person to communicate with so that they have someone they trust and they care about who isn't their pimp, who isn't that emotionally dependent person. Uh, and then also looking at making sure that behavioral health services are already in play and that we have those. So whatever they're going out to, may, it may be an in-service shelter where they're staying, it may be a, a bed that's set up, but it may also be back to their aunt or uncle's house, it may be back somewhere else. Making sure that we have that bridge with at least those three elements covered so that going on in the future they have some support and they have access to resources that they're already familiar with. Councilman Williams? Uh, thank you, I too have a question and it kind of follows uh, Councilman Cicio. Uh, approximately 10 years ago, uh, this was a topic that I think uh, Councilwoman Peggy Bilstein had a task force working on. And at that time I worked in the jails and I went over and talked to the juvenile girls that were in the adult system that were 
all engaged in one form or another of uh, prostitution. And what I learned is part of it is uh, by choice, by the fact that how else am I supposed to earn money? I don't want to sell drugs. It's only sex. That was the other two. The other ones that I learned that I, I hope that you have uh, talked about, uh, you know, there's usually a man involved one way or the other, whether he led a man or has become the pimp. Um, if you talk them into looking for help and then what do you do? Because there's, you can't force them to take these services and you can't force them into a home. Um, how are you going to address that? Because that's a big challenge if they're not convicted and court ordered. You really have no control. And I think one of the key is not only building back for the mental health issues, addressing many of the f physical problems they didn't have, but helping them find a, a legitimate occupation <laughs> I think is key to success. So I don't know which one could possibly answer. Thank you. If I could add something to that, and I love uh, what you said, Councilman Nowakowski, because a segment of this effort, most importantly, who can be such a tremendous influence on these young girls are former victims. And we have heard the most incredible stories. The young woman that testified at the Senate and uh, who uh, earned a PhD uh, it, some of these stories are just absolutely amazing, and I think just like it's peer to peers who are the most influential to each other, I do believe that what we need to do is a huge effort working with uh, recovering victims. They can be tremendous in this effort, so I applaud everything that Trust is doing in, in this arena, and, and uh, any ideas that you all have please don't hesitate to contact any of us. We're, we're here to make a difference and to make Phoenix a model. If I may add to that, of um, one of the, um, at the outset, the four work groups that were identified, victim service being one of them, and one of the overarching messages and themes here of creating Phoenix as a model city, not just uh, for the Super Bowl, but well past the Super Bowl, so that there is a continuum and improvement and we gain as we go along. And hopefully there is an attrition. With that attrition, uh, when you look at the committee or work group that Kim Sterling Heflin chaired for O'Connor House and for this task force, the community awareness and outreach, the helping the public understand and know that this is a real problem that happens in our community and of course well beyond. Uh, the victim services, uh, working with a Dream Center, Streetlight. Phoenix has r tremendous resources helping the community become aware of those, certainly law enforcement creating a hostile environment against the perpetrators that has teeth. And now with uh, this bill, a, uh, 2454, it has teeth. And of course, Katie Resendez, who's one of the most knowledgeable individuals I've had the privilege of meeting on the topic of human trafficking. So I think that coalition is going to go a long way, but I think key to it is the sustainability of the task force and the work well beyond 2015. I, th I think you're absolutely correct, and I think the timing is right because there's been a lot of publicity and it's m brought more attention. Uh, I think it's very difficult for the average person to understand how prolific this is. Uh, the ramifications for our community as well as every individual that's involved. So I really applaud all you've done and I want to thank the mayor and especially Vice Mayor Waring. This is a tough subject to tackle and uh, but sustaining the effort I think is the key to the success and if anybody can do it, Phoenix can and thank you all for all your hard work. Thank you very much, uh, Council. And other comments? Council Nowakowski, please. Mayor, I'd just like to thank you for uh, creating this task force and our vice mayor for sharing it and all the individuals that helped out. You know, this compass plan is a great plan. One of the things I was just reading through the plan that I believe that neighborhoods and individuals like myself would really benefit from it is um, we need to figure out what are the signs, um, what do you look for, um, what does a victim look like? A lot of times when you watch the news, you, you hear about how a next door neighbor had 
nine people caged up and they never knew that that was happening. This guy's such a nice guy. He, he would help out our neighbors and this and that. So how, as residents, how as individuals, can we actually look for individuals that are in our neighborhoods? And I think that would be something that I would like added to this, the educational component where we as residents could actually have some symbols or signs that identify the victims. We actually have a red flag brochure that is part of our community outreach and so we can provide that to Mayor and Council and, and, and if you have a community group that wants that um, and we can provide it, it's part of our law enforcement training, the, the, the red flags to look for. So we do have it and we'll, we'll make sure that you have it, sir. Oh, thank you so much. And then the other thing too is once again, the, uh, the program that we have here out of our prosecutor's office, it's just a great program. It's um, ex-prostitute, actually it's a six months course where ex-prostitutes -prostitute, are actually peers for those individuals and, and the training that they go through and, and it's very strict. And about, I think it's about 80 or 90% um, graduate rate and it's just amazing how these individuals are changing their lives and we actually run the program. So it's something that we're doing already and it's been a model for other cities and we should, it should be a point of pride for us as citizens. And thank you all once again. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman, mentioning that though not seat at the table, there is no question that Phoenix Municipal Court uh, has been a leader on this issue, is considered a national uh, model, not just prosecutor, but also uh, the judges having gone through the training. Uh, and uh, it's something we should be very proud of and something that we can also utilize to be successful in making sure we're the safest host of the Super Bowl. Other comments or questions by member of this council? Um, I just wanna say, uh, Councilman Waring, a great job by you. Um, Ashley, you're from your team, uh, has just been so impressed by uh, your, your incredibly professional um, uh, work on this important effort. Sarah, you and your leadership, all the members of the task force, we're just getting started. I know, assuming that this vote is in the affirmative, uh, now the work really begins. Uh, we really roll up our sleeves and make it happen. We'll be asking that uh, this leadership team come back before this council in the fall as we go through an entire checklist of how we're preparing for the Super Bowl, uh, not just the hosting responsibilities for the uh, Super Bowl Central in downtown Phoenix, but this is equally as important. The success of this program is as important as anything else we do in preparation for the Super Bowl. And I know, you know, we get your message that by setting up the right standards for the Super Bowl and then keeping it going thereafter, we're gonna make our city as safe as possible um, uh, thereafter. So thanks everyone for your leadership. So we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Look forward to working with you closely.